The financial institution sector is made up of banks and non-banks, including insurers, asset managers, aircraft leasing companies, card schemes, central counterparties and governmental agencies. And while it may appear difficult to pinpoint a consistent need across this broad sector, the sector does have many shared elements and technology can be the unifying factor. Key to this is the real-time sharing of rich data for FI players seeking greater process efficiencies. Connectivity to all these new technologies is essential. Well, joining us to explain more about this is Stephanie Wolf. Now, she's the head of global financial institutions, governments, and business banking transaction services at Bank of America. Stephanie, welcome to Cybos TV. You're very busy. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, Cybos tends to be an event where your dance card is full from morning until evening, and I might say into the wee hours of the following day. So <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you found some space for us then. <laughs> I mean, the, the interesting thing about Cyboss is that we've got around 11,000 attendees this year, the most, most of them, of course, from financial institutions. Now, given what you do, okay, because you really do have your finger on the pulse, what do you think are the big issues on the minds of those financial institutions? What are they telling you? You know, usually when I come to Cybos, I know what the theme is going to be. I'm prepared, I'm ready, our team is ready. We understand what our clients want to talk about. This year, I approached Cybos with a very open mind because there wasn't a theme that was ever present. And the first thing I've noticed is that the majority of our conversations are not about AML and KYC and regulation. Still important, and we can certainly cover that, but it is not the driving force of our conversations. The second thing I've noticed is we're not talking about fintechs, we're talking about innovation. And we're talking about the fact that everyone at this conference is in the process of changing what they used to be to what they're going to be in the future. So less regulation, more innovation. I would clearly have to note that the global economic environment is certainly in a state where we expect economic downturn in certain jurisdictions around the world. And interest rates are lowering in many jurisdictions and they've continued negative in certain jurisdictions. So the global economic environment as well as interest rates, uh, it's quite important. And then last but not least, I've been quite pleased to see many of our dialogues are evolving around ESG, mm. and it, so it would be environmental, social governance of companies, sustainability, and that's been a pleasant change as well as we bring ESG and sustainability into the transaction services remit. Mm, reflective of what's happening in the wider world, of exactly. course. Exactly. Speaking on those themes at Cybos this year, uh, one key theme is, of course, thriving in a hyper-connected world. Uh, how does that apply to the Bank Ameri of America and, and your clients? Well, I managed to leave my handheld in another room while we're having this conversation, so I'm feeling a, a little <laughs> unconnected right now. But if you think about what much of what we're talking about in these halls are transactions between major counterparties, mostly payments. And if you think about correspondent banking, that's what correspondent banking is. It is connecting two or more institutions in order to assure global commerce. I find it interesting when I get asked questions about correspondent banking, why are you in the correspondent banking business? And I look and I say, if we did not have correspondent banking, you would not be able to pay your utility bill. Mm. You would not be able to pay your rent. We have to be connected in order to assure global commerce continues. Now, as you know, we're hyper-connected, so we've lifted the bar and there is no rest for the weary because now we're 24-7, 365 or 366 every four years. In, in your earlier answer, you refer to anti-money laundering initiatives and the importance of knowing your customer. I know that you're really hot on that issue as well. But again, things which have been talked about at Cybos, but 
What is evolving in the marketplace to manage these processes? Because they are key. And are they getting better or will they get better? Good news on that front. And I think that's why it's not as significant of a topic. First of all, I have to thank our host, Swift, for this. Swift worked very hard in the industry to find commonly agreed upon principles for KYC, know your client, in order to address anti-money laundering AML issues. So Swift has put in place a registry where different institutions can store their information and if I need that information, if Bank of America needs to understand another client, I ask them, can I go in the database? Can I get your information? They say yes, I get it. So I've brought technology into the equation. I've also brought a standard set of questions into the equation. Instead of Bank of America having its own questions, Bank B having their own questions, Bank C all the way through to Z. We have the same questions. We share where we store them. So the long and the short of what is better about addressing AML concerns, it's that all of the banks have had a chance to catch up with uh, the changing regs by building technology. It's all about technology. But if the regs are changing in every country, every quarter, and differing between each other, I can't ever catch up. I'm always going to be manually collecting information and manually inputting it, and then asking the questions again and again. We have had time to catch up. Bank of America has brought a number of different technology solutions into our KYC process, including the SWIFT registry, so that we have a secure pipe with which to exchange information. We have a consistent time period. We use internal tools to gather all the data we need before asking you a question. So again, common database, common questions, technology are what have made all of our lives easier, and I am confident that almost anyone attending this conference will say the same thing. Mm. And also real-time payment networks, these have proliferated. So what are the implications of all these networks for banks operating in an increasingly global economy, a connected global economy? It means that your investment budget gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you think about it, every country that adds an instant payment, I, c I call them rails. What is one rail means of making a payment? Cash, not that much of it anymore, but it still exists. I can write a check, which is laughable in this country, but uh, Americans still write quite a few checks. I can use my card, either debit or credit. I can send a wire. I can make an instant payment. So I have to be able to address every single one of these needs on the part of my customer. So every single instant payment scheme that comes into play is going to mean that I have to build a way to connect to it. I have to build a connection point to my client so my client can use it. Mm -hmm. And then I have to build an operations, a customer service, and a transaction monitoring ring fence around it to make sure it's safe and secure. So while that sounds like it's a burden, it is the most exciting thing that's happening in our business today. I can make a payment in some jurisdictions in less than 10 seconds, a payment with certainty in your current account. I can make it across borders. Swift has done tests of cross-border instant payments. I can be sitting in, let's just say, an automobile showroom on a Saturday afternoon. Not that a car's an impulse purchase, but let's say you're there, and I can pay for that car, and the dealer can be paid within less than a minute, and I leave the showroom, and the bank has been closed for hours and hours. So we talked about hyper-connectivity, mm -hmm. the world of instant payments, faster payments, it means the hyper-connectivity is, is demonstrated each and every day. And one more point, think about what we can do. 
there are people who are working in this hall, perhaps the barista that I got my coffee from this morning. What if you could pay the barista every single day? You probably could if you could make an instant payment. Of course. Why wait exactly. for the end of the week or the end of the month? Mm. It's a very exciting time. You can tell. I'm yeah. excited about you it. You are very excited. <laughs> <laughs> now, Stephanie, the other perennial topic here at Cybos this year has been the, the healthy debate around fintechs versus the banks. What's your take on that question in 2019? First of all, I would say that Bank of America is a fintech. The last I checked, we're a financial services company that spends 13 billion US dollars a year on technology. And we have created any number of new applications that have never been used by our clients, mm. allowing them access to financial services, whether it be credit, access to their balances, a means to make a payment that didn't exist. But you are correct, there is an industry that has the Nomiker FinTech. And if you were at Cybos three years ago, the question was, are we banks, dinosaurs, are the fintechs, the next generation of payment services providers? If you ask me now, my fintech companies are my partners. I utilize fintechs to offer services to my clients in jurisdictions that I might not have a branch. They are, a Bank of America is a client of theirs, I'm a client, and they're also my client because I provide them services that they use around the world. So I think it's a much more symbiotic relationship. Uh, I think you see financial services companies owning portions of what are called fintechs. You see them partnering and you see them working together to serve clients. Okay, so a partnership, a good relationship. It's just like correspondent banking we can't affect global commerce unless we work together. Yeah. And look, we're at Cybos this year, but you've been to quite a few Cybos conferences. Dare I say it, you're a bit of a Cybos veteran. I in am. In a positive way. I have a colleague who hit 25. I'm not sure I'm ever going <laughs> to get there. Keep trying, you may do. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, look, you've seen a lot in the times that you've, you have been attending Cybos. So from your perspective, what is the one thing that hasn't changed, and amongst the things that have changed, what strikes you as the most fundamental over the years that you've been attending? Sure, um, that's not an easy question either. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, what has not changed is a willingness to listen. So when I'm here at Cybos, I'm attending sessions, I'm having meetings, I'm having a cocktail. I think you will find almost everyone here is here to learn something new and to share their thoughts and get feedback on what their organization is thinking. So the, the theme is listen and learn. That has not changed and it makes the conference very valuable for us as a company and for me personally. Uh, what has changed, and this is great, uh, is there's a sense of urgency. Mm. There's a sense of change. I work in an industry where a lot stayed the same for a long time. Mm. And tradition is wonderful, predictability is nice. But being in a world where the pace of change is frenetic and change is the status quo, gives the entire industry and all of the participants a sense of urgency that I feel very much and have felt in the last couple of years. Okay. Well, we look forward to perhaps catching up with you again in 12 months times in Boston. Boston. And we'll see what that sense of urgency brings to us in 2020. But for now, Stephanie Wolf, Head of Global Financial Institutions, Governments and Business Banking, Sales at Bank of America. Thank you very much for joining us on Cybos TV. Thank you. Thank you.